Travis here on your Friday edition of the K-Zone Lunchbox. Hope you're enjoying your afternoon. The weather, I promise, will get better this weekend. And better weather is on the horizons. And that's actually the title track. It's the new single uh, from Madeline Paquette. We're going to hear that single coming up in just a little bit. And joining us on the phone right now, Sudbury native Madeline Paquette. She's a rising pop country singer who's got some awards and some great attention at the age of just 20 years old. Madeline, how are you? Hi, Travis. Thank you so much for having me. I'm great. Absolutely. We're glad to have you on the air with us. Now, I know this whole COVID-19 thing has really shaken everybody up, but it's provided you some inspiration, and we're going to play that inspiration in, in just a little bit. Uh, prior to coming back home to Sudbury, I understand you were down at the Tisch School for the Arts at NYU. Can you tell us about your music experience and what led you to going to the Tisch School for the Arts to study at NYU? Yeah, sure. So I grew up in a you know completely surrounded by music my whole dad's side of the family is very musical Mm -hmm. and i grew up just for such a deep passion for singing and um and playing instruments and i got into songwriting which is really what changed uh the trajectory of my life and my goals so um throughout middle school and high school i was writing my own songs um learned a little bit a little bit about producing and performing and i just knew that i wanted to end up at a school where my focus was all those things because i definitely see myself obviously pursuing mm-hmm. um, music professionally throughout my throughout my life. So um, I ended up at, you know, the Clive Davis Institute at NYU and, wow. and the Tisch School. And uh, it's been such a dream. This is my sophomore year. Obviously, it was cut a little bit short, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, I've had such a great experience there. met so many people. Um, i you know, blessed to know so much amazing faculty. And, um, yeah, I've experienced a lot of growth in, in amazing times. So, so it's been a cool experience. And New York City is just a little bit bigger than Sudbury. What was it like making that transition for you to kind of that big city life for college? Yes, uh, it's huge and wild. Um, I was really excited to take on that new adventure, though. I mean, yeah, I come from a really small town, but I was I was just so excited. It's mm-hmm. a, it was a big change, but I got used to it pretty fast, and it never sleeps, as they say. So it was a, a crazy ride. And I was reading on your bio that you've performed in Boston a number of times at Faneuil Hall in different areas. Uh, For you, what was it like to have a brand new city to perform in and a whole bunch of new places you could go and and work on your craft? That was amazing. Um, I was, as you said, I'm very used to street performing in Boston at Faneuil Hall, which has been like an amazing experience all in itself. And I think kind of prepared me for the venue scene in a way. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, the New York uh, music scene is incredible. Um, There are so many venues that I've uh, played at so far and, and loved and hopefully I can get back to doing that soon but yeah just every show and every different venue you learn something new about yourself as a as an artist and about the scene and how kind of the business works so yeah it's just been a, a growing experience and learning something new every time now when people go to a music venue they're expecting to hear performances uh, but when they're in their street they're not necessarily looking to hear somebody singing or performing so for you kind of cutting your teeth as a street performer in the Boston area. Do you feel it was an added challenge where you're trying to win over people who aren't necessarily looking for music at the moment and you're trying to pull them in? For sure. I mean, in that situation, um, it's kind of, I I look at it like I'm just trying to have a good time Mm -hmm. and um, it's always just, I never really expect, you know, a certain number of people to stop and listen, but it's always such a nice surprise when somebody does stop by for two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes and give me their attention and let me know that they they like what they hear like that's always just super nice and I don't really go with expectations but it always just makes me smile and it's it's really good to see so you ended up finding out you're going to have to come home from NYU because of COVID-19 what was it like when you found out that campus was going to be closing and you're going to have to pack your things and head back home to Sudbury yeah that was uh it was really hard I mean we were preparing to come home for spring break that that was expected um and a couple days before everyone was supposed to leave the dean sent out a message saying that we should pack up a little bit more of our stuff than maybe we had originally planned to um and so my dad drove up to new york and picked me up and um it was very hard and then fast forward a couple days later i was at home and they sent out a message saying if you didn't pack up your whole room go and do that ASAP and, and go back home so then we had to actually drive all the way back pack up my entire room and come back to Sudbury so it was just kind of a, a whirlwind that that week was just crazy you know taking two round trips you know from Boston to New York uh, vice versa yeah it was, it was crazy 
And and for you inspirationally though, I understand this did provide a little bit of um, the backdrop for your your newest single, Better Weather. Tell us how you were able to channel those emotions into the song. I guess I, I mean, it was just very overwhelming to leave New York. Um, I think I was still struggling to grasp the severity of what was going on at the moment. Um, it took a couple days and even a week of being home for that to set in, but pulling away from my dorm was, you know, it was just crazy. And it was raining, and I was just so sad, honestly. I had just said some really tough goodbyes, and um, I didn't know when I was going to see my NYU family again, um, my beautiful city that I love so so much. Um, and so I was driving away with my dad, and I just kind of took some notes on my phone, um, some things I was feeling, and I didn't really look at them until a couple days later, and I got home, and I sat at the piano and just kind of looked at those lyrics again, and after a couple days of sitting on this news and this situation, um, I just, I wrote the rest of the song and it just kind of came together because, um, you know, it just reflected my thought process of what was going on. It starts off, you know, I, I, I discussed some of like the fears and frustrations and confusing, confusing things that are happening. And then I think the song takes a more uplifting uh, note. So. Yeah, that's kind of how that came to be. So you penned this song, you started producing it at your studio back home. Uh, did anybody else join in on this uh, musically? Yeah, I had a lot of help, actually. Um, my sister came in and sang a bunch of the backup vocals, the harmonies for me, which is super nice. So both of our voices are on, on that. Mm -hmm. um, although people say we sound very similar, so it's hard to distinguish. But um, yeah, that was really, really great of her. Uh, my boyfriend, Michael Miranides from New Jersey, he's also a producer. Yeah. And um, and I sent him the song, and uh, and he makes a lot of, like, soundtrack film score music. So um, I thought of him to do the strings, um, and so he arranged just a beautiful section of strings to put in the song, and he also did the beat. And he sent it back to me, and then, you know, I wrapped it up and sent it off to mastering. Um, and, yeah, you know, and I had some help, too, with some non-musical aspects of the release as well, which was really helpful, you know, friends from New York helping me. Uh, with the cover art and just the, the business side of things. So it took a village. It happened. Very grateful for everyone that was involved. Were you surprised by the feedback you've received on this song so far? Because I know it's got a lot of attraction on, on some bigger radio stations in the state, and you, you've had news articles written about you as well. It's been amazing. I'm so honored and, and humbled that people have um, have loved the song so much so far. I wrote I wrote this song for myself. I was having a really hard time with this, mm -hmm. as I know a lot of people are um, and have been. So I I just felt so kind of relieved and comforted by having this song complete and working on it over the, the months that I did. just gave me a lot of peace, and I wanted to put it out there in hopes that maybe, it did, maybe it'll do the same thing for someone else. And, I mean, I've gotten some really great responses. People have, you know sent me messages saying that they cried listening to it. They sent it to all their friends. It's like, it's given them a lot of hope. And I mean, my favorite thing is, um, I have this fan in Sweden, mm -hmm. um, who told me that a couple weeks ago, all she wanted was like a hug to make her feel better. And obviously that's not possible right now because of social distancing, but she said the better weather was kind of like that hug for her. Wow. And that just made it all worth it to me. And, you know, affirm the reason why I, I wanted to put it out. So that was really amazing. And, you know, the digital age that we're in allows you to send singles, put them out there on the internet, and folks in Sweden, folks in every other country can check them out. But even from a production standpoint, you're able to involve someone states away. You mentioned your boyfriend down in Jersey, able to have him be on this track. How much has the digital age really helped musicians like yourself during a time like this, during the COVID-19 outbreak? I think it's essential. I think it's so helpful. Um, I mean, I think, I think this kind of collaboration happens all the time, regardless of yeah. um, the pandemic. But it's it really just is so important right now. It makes so many things possible. And using technology in different ways, like Zoom for classes or like video chatting for online classes, like I've been doing, mm -hmm. and um, even for live stream concerts, like all of these different ways to use technology have been shining through and really being a great support system for artists, especially independent artists uh, like myself at home. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a really great resource. 
And we're going to talk about your classes in just a moment. First, though, I want to give listeners a chance to hear this new single. It's called Better Weather. We're going to play it right now here on the KZone 105.3 FM and AM 1280 WPKZ. Then we'll continue our conversation with the very talented Madeline Paquette from Sudbury here on the KZone Afternoon Lunchbox. life is uncertainty answers need them urgently not knowing is burning me i'm out here pacing nervously i know it's out of my control the way the future will unfold but it's getting hard to stay afloat i'm reaching for something to hold Ooh, i wonder when it'll be our time again time with it and I'm gonna trust you Is how do we measure? A ton of bricks are light as a feather Our actions matter more now than ever But diamonds form under pressure I'm taking pictures in my mind Before I leave it all behind It's time for us to sacrifice And maybe we can save a life Perfect time to start believing Cause baby, we're all on this ship together And we're on our way, we're on our way to better weather Better weather Here on the KZone 105.3 FM at AM 1280 WPKZ, the brand new track inspired by what we're all going through right now with COVID-19 called Better Weather. And continue our conversation. Madeline is on the phone from Sudbury from her home studio today. Madeline, how are you? Oh, hold on. There we go. Madeline, how are you? I'm great. How are you? We're doing well. Uh, I want to thank you for sharing that single with us. And I think we all can relate to that. I know it was dead quiet between me and Sherman here in the studio just kind of taking that track in and, and listening to the emotion behind it now your classes at NYU are, are they still continuing even though you're at home right now they are yeah we have about what, two more weeks one more week mm -hmm. still going so they're still going um, you've been doing them remotely do you know when you'll be able to get back down there and, and see your friends and your NYU family that you were talking about earlier as of now, not yet. I think they're still waiting uh, for some more information. We're all, we're all just kind of standing by waiting for what's coming next. Mm -hmm. So you've turned out this single, Better Weather. Are you working on any more projects while you're at home and while you've got some time creatively? That's my goal. I think, I mean, my plan for usually every summer is to go back to Boston and perform as much as I can, but that mm -hmm. probably won't be happening. So I think just to make the most out of my time here, I mean, making music in my little bedroom setup is what I'll be doing the most of writing and producing what I can. 
And so you got this new single, Better Weather, out, but you've put out a number of singles beforehand, and I understand uh, just last week you actually got some exciting news about one of those singles and an award. Tell us all about that. Yeah, oh my goodness. So my song, Broke Like Me, just won an independent music award. Um, I put out Broke Like Me uh, in November, late yeah. November of 2019, and um, I was really excited about it. I love I love the song. It's very special to me. Um, I wrote it with my good friend in New York, Ryan Doyle, um, last year, my freshman year. And, um, yeah, this was a fan-voted award, and so basically just my fans and friends and family voted for it to win, and it won. So it means everything to me, and the fact that people love it and, and made it win just is, like, incredible. So it's, it was great news to hear, it during, especially during this time. Well, I think there's definitely big things on the horizon for you. 20 years old, already taking home an independent music award, and you've got more singles that you're working on, and you've got plenty of music that you've put out. Uh, we're going to tell listeners where they can get your music in just a moment, but I understand you at a very um, earlier age understood the importance of attaching yourself to causes that you believe in, and one of those causes is uh, Baby Safe Haven. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, so I'll give you some context as to how I got involved with that. Um, yeah. I met the regional director of Baby Safe Haven, Mike Morrissey, uh, back in 2015. I had a performance and uh, during my freshman year, and we got to talking afterwards about the organization, Baby Safe Haven, and I just immediately felt really connected to it. You know, as a young 15, 16, 17-year-old girl, I recognized how fortunate I was to have such a strong, you know, support system and group of friends and trusted adults to go to if I ever found myself uh, in trouble. And I knew that, you know, there are so many young women who don't have as good of a support system as I did. And um, basically, Baby Safe Haven, the, the law allows a young woman to, a young mother to drop off her baby up to seven days old mm -hmm. uh, to a fire station, police station, or hospital to staff worker, completely anonymous, um, no guilt, no questions. They can just drive away. Um, and this law just, it saves lives because sometimes young women um, in a desperate situation might abandon their babies and it's really tragic. So Baby yeah. Safe Haven gives them a much safer alternative. Um, I just, yeah, I just felt very connected to um, the organization and what it stood for. Um, and I started working with Mike and raising awareness through musical performances and interviews and just other peer-to-peer -peer things like that. And our goal is just to spread the message to any young woman who needs to hear that, you know, they aren't alone. They've got a, a system in place that's looking after them. Um, and, yeah, I, I'll plug the, uh, the hotline. The Massachusetts number to call would be 866-814-SAFE. And the website is babysafehaven.boston. And for you, Madeline, what's it like knowing that you're able to make a difference with your music, not just connecting with people on an emotional level, but making them aware of a support that they themselves might need someday or that somebody in their family might need to use someday? I've always said that, um, you know, if, if I can help this one young woman, that would be all, you know, with this cause of just helping one person, at least one person, that's, that's my goal. So hopefully I've been able to do that or will continue to do that. Um, yeah, just doing as much as I can, uh, and I hope that it makes a difference. So right now your live performances throughout the Boston area, which usually happen in the summer, are, are on hold, uh, but you do have a studio where you can make new music. If listeners want to follow your progress and check out your other singles and find out what you're going to be up to, where can they follow you online? Um, okay, so if you would like to hear more of my music, you can visit my website, which is madelinepaquettemusic.com. That's M-A-D-E-L-Y-N-P-A-Q-U-E-T-T-E, music.com. And uh, go ahead and follow me on Instagram as well, um, Madeline Paquette, first and last name, and Facebook, Madeline Paquette Music as well. And Madeline, how do you spell your first name? M-A-D-E-L-Y-N. Well, Madeline, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to be here this afternoon for sharing your single with us. We're looking forward to more uh, music, hopefully in the not too distant future out of you. And congratulations on the Independent Music Award. That's a huge achievement. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me. This has been such a fun chat. Oh, I'm happy to have you. Anytime you want to call, call just call up and we'll, we'll get you on the air, okay? Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madeline. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. You too. Madeline Paquette from Sudbury. Go check out her brand new single, Better Weather. Maybe it'll help you feel a little bit better about everything that's going on with COVID-19. And as Sherman mentioned, we are going to see some better weather.